One additional thing that we need to be able to do with precipitate reactions is to write a net ionic equation. Please copy down the definition, and then we're going to take a look at our first example. In our first example, barium nitrate and potassium chromate combined to produce potassium nitrate as an aqueous solution and barium chromate as a precipitate. Now, a net ionic equation is an equation that includes only the ions that come together to form the precipitate. So here we have barium chromate as our precipitate. What two ions make barium chromate? You're right. The barium ion and the chromate ion. They are what come together to form barium chromate. And they were initially aqueous because they were in water solutions, right? And when we mix them together, they formed barium chromate. This is what we call a net ionic equation. It involves only the ions that come together to form the precipitate. Let's take a look at our second example. We had sodium sulfide, an aqueous solution, reacting with an aqueous solution of cuprous nitrate. We produced aqueous sodium nitrate and a precipitate of cuprous sulfide. If we're asked to write the net ionic equation for this, we only include the ions that make the precipitate. So since we were working with cuprous, we have a plus one charge, and to that we added a sulfide ion in order to produce cuprous sulfide solid. Excuse me. These were both aqueous. It is important to have your physical states. Now, if you take a look here though, we're not balanced. We have a problem. We have an overall negative one charge over here on the reactant side, and we have to be electrically neutral. Also, we've got two coppers over here. So when we write the net ionic equations, we do have to balance them. So we do need a two coefficient in front of the cupric ion. Okay. In our third and final example, we had sodium phosphate reacting with aqueous barium chloride to produce sodium chloride solution, which is just salt water, and barium phosphate precipitated out. Again, a net ionic equation involves only the ions that come together to form your precipitate. So we're going to write the net ionic equation for the barium phosphate. We no longer care about the other ions. Sodium and chlorine, we identify as spectator ions. Because all they're doing is watching the precipitate happen. We call them spectator ions because they don't participate in the actual chemical reaction. All right, let's take a look. Barium gets a plus two charge, and it is aqueous. Phosphate has a minus three charge, and it is aqueous. Together, they form the barium phosphate, Ba3, PO4, 2, and that is a solid. Now again, we have to balance our net ionic equations. We've got three barium ions and two phosphate ions as our product. When we look here, we end up with a neutral charge because we've got a total of positive six and a total of negative six. So we are electrically neutral and our atoms are balanced. So the law of conservation of mass is held. Your take home point here, our net ionic equations are written to show only the ions that form a precipitate in a precipitation reaction. 
Also, spectator ions are the ions that do not form a precipitate. They literally don't play a part in the chemical reaction at all. We're going to work on this in class with a problem set tomorrow, and we will better refine your own skills on this. Have a great evening.